For Casey Neistat, there are two competing obsessions in his life, YouTube videos and Shake Shack. So for our season finale, we knew we had to roll out the Burger Show red carpet, which is why we brought him to the exclusive Shake Shack Innovation Kitchen for the ultimate bucket list burger experience to taste test special limited edition burgers and crown a winner. Yo, Casey. What's up, brother? So good to finally meet you. Yo, thanks for being on the show. I'm a fan of the show. I'm a huge fan of your restaurants. Dude. YouTuber, vlogger, filmmaker extraordinaire. I'm so <laughs> excited for this. There's a Shake Shack across the street from my bedroom. And the green glows into my bedroom like this. And right. I'm on like, I'd say 50 to 60% of my caloric intake is Shake Shack. Amazing. But I, you know, I would take a Shake Shack over almost any fast food. I like a fat burger. Okay. I like an In-N-Out. Oh, dude. Yes. Uh, last time you were on First We Feast. Is tapping out part of this? Like, do people quit? Sometimes. Sean, you did my boy dirty. It's tradition around here to put a little extra on the last wing. Not cool, Sean. <laughs> Not cool. But today, this is kind of like a karmic reward. I'm ready. Right, this is all about pleasure, no pain. This is kind of like, you know, the editing room, right? This is where like new ideas get tested and then become burgers to be sold all over the world. So what we get to try today is never, these are like unreleased. Yeah, this th the these are, no, these are like limited edition runs. Fantastic. This is like, you know, waiting for a shoe at Supreme without having to be in line. And like all the hype beasts are just like, yo, Yo, These guys are it. Those hype beeps are like, yo, let me get a bite of that sneaker. We're two of the luckiest bastards in the world right now. <laughs> so ready. Right, this is the plug, Mark Rizzotti. He's the culinary genius behind Shake Shack's burgers. And, and what do you have for us today? So what this is, is a special burger we created with a chef from uh, Japan, Zayu Hasegawa. He has a two-star Michelin restaurant, and he's uh, restaurant number 17 on the world's 50 best list right now. What he created here is a plain burger, double smoked bacon, a special mix-up of his house-made red miso paste, our shack sauce, and then we took some uh, pickled cucumbers, laid them out on top like fish skin. He's a very cool guy, he's a very fun guy to the point that he has his own figurine. Dude. So I'm gonna leave that here as you gentlemen enjoy the burger. I feel like I'm being judged. <laughs> hey, let's do this. Yeah, cheers. Why don't they serve this in every restaurant? Exactly. This thing is fantastic. Uh, so I'm a little bit of a, like a Philistine when it comes to fine culinary. Right. But typically I like a, just a straight burger because I find that when the burgers are too much shit on them or whatever. You just, right. you don't taste the burger. Right, I agree. But this just feels like it's, it's like elevating. It, it's it, making the burger burger better. I feel like the sauce is like a an Asian steakhouse sauce, where it's like, it kind of elevates the beef flavor. You could tell a fine mind put this burger together. For people like me, uninformed consumers, I would probably be intimidated and not know to order this if I saw it on the menu. Like when it was being pitched uh. to us, Yep. I had no idea what the hell he's talking no, about. No, it makes sense. I don't know what any of those words are. Double smoked bacon, a special mix up of his house made red miso paste, our shack sauce. Exactly. But then you eat it and you're like, fuck, that's amazing. Yeah, you have to like open your eyes a little bit where it's like, if I'm trying to understand the chef and his culture, he nailed it. Yeah. Oh, so fucking good. I could never make a burger like this. <laughs> I wish I could make food that tastes like this. So I watch a bunch of your videos. All right. Now. I want to tell a story. And what I admire most is that you call YouTube like a democratic platform. I feel like burgers are a democratic food. But in like this crazy world, people are making highbrow, lowbrow situations where there's like a, a $300 burger or chicken wings that are laced in gold leaf. Like in your world, in your mind, is there room for stuff like that? I think that there, it's, it's kind of a good parallel. It's kind of a good analogy because you got like the biggest YouTuber in the world, like yeah, 83 million subscribers. And he's just a camera 
That's filming himself. It's one camera that he's talking to. There's nothing complicated about what he's doing. Sometimes a 99 cent McDonald's cheeseburger is better than like the $80 Wagyu gigantic burger. You just don't want that. I couldn't agree more. Dude, nothing, $4 nothing pains Shack? me more than seeing a colleague fall into that trap. You know who you are. That was intimidating when you said, <laughs> I know who you are, and then you <laughs> I know who you are. So the next one I have for you is for Chef uh, Massimo Batura. Uh, we're going to Italy on this one here, and he has restaurant Osteria Francescana in Modena, number one restaurant on the world's 50 best list, uh, three Michelin stars, and we created a burger together called the Emilia. And what he wanted to do is celebrate everything that's great about his region. So with the patty, we have uh, Cotacchino sausage and Parmesan ground into the meat, smash and griddle it. On the bottom is balsamic mayonnaise using the chef's own balsamic, and on top to cut through all that richness, salsa verde. Uh, we actually served this twice, once in New York City for one day and once in London for one day, and it was absolutely madness. What happens when you serve it for one day? Like, do people know it's coming and they wait for it? They do. We've actually been very fortunate where every time we've done one of these, we actually see some of the same people show up, depending on what the city is. First in line, some get there as early as 5 a.m. and say, I gotta see what that's like. Shake Shack is creating like a whole hype beast food situation, <laughs> man. Mm-hmm. Mm. This dude's number one. The number one chef on Pellegrino's list for a goddamn reason. So what is the, what's the crispiness they put cheese in the meat before they? Yeah. Cotacchino sausage, mm. beef, and Parmesan cheese in the patty. Then they smash it so the cheese melts and then creates like a crisp. And that's why it's all brown and crunchy around the side. Yeah. This is getting into the mind of a Michelin star chef. It's soft, sweet, clean and refreshing with the salsa verde. Mm. Crunchy umami with the meat and the cheese and then like this nice, creamy, acidic, balsamic mayo. The Den Burger felt like a, it was like a lighter. It was like almost a sweeter, almost a more like refreshing Very burger. Very refreshing, yeah. But this one feels like the, um, like the flavors in it have more cohesion. It tastes Harmonious. Like, Harmony is the word I was looking yes, for. It's, it's like a fucking Italian opera in a fucking burger, man. No, this is the Italian opera of burgers. In the world, in the kingdom of YouTube, mm -hmm. there's so many like food subcultures. My favorite genre, subgenre of food shows on YouTube is there's this guy. 7-Elevens in Japan are like a like a culinary cacophony of food choices. And they're okay. amazing. And there's a guy who goes in there and does like brunch in a 7-Eleven. What? And he just tries everything inside of a 7-Eleven. He eats it while he's in there. In the 7-Eleven. I don't think he has permission to do it, right. but he just does it. Dude. And then that would never exist. Could you imagine pitching that to like Food Network? Oh yeah. The tiny food people. Have you seen that? Where they make like the tiny. The tiny yeah, like. And they have like a little hamster come out and eat right. it. What precipitates in someone's mind to come up with making a perfect taco to feed to a hamster? Exactly. But I can't stop watching it. No, it's fascinating. Watch it, every single like, subscribe. So what we have here is a burger that we've actually created for our Los Angeles Shake Shacks. It's something that you can get all the time, but only in Los Angeles. We're really excited about this. It's called the Roadside Double. It's inspired by all those old burger shacks that have been around since the 50s here. What it is, is a double Swiss burger. And then we add a little bit of uh, bacon and beard simmered onions. We cook those in our own Shackmeister beer. And then the last touch is a little Dijon mustard. It's actually inspired by the iconic sandwich of LA, the French dip. French dip. dip. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of our loose interpretation of it. But then ultimately at the end of the day, just a good old fashioned Shake Shack burger. Are your biceps tired from having to hold these two <laughs> these heavy guys. ass burgers? You know, it's a labor of love. Same size as my head. Mm. This is like punching in the face flavor. Mm-hmm. Right? It just keeps coming. Yeah, there's the bitterness from the beer uh, onions. And then the mustard just like, uh, Yeah. Yeah, and then if that's not enough, you've got like two patties two like patties. coming from here and coming from here. The two patties change the dynamic of the entire burger. Because all of yeah. a sudden, the, the uh, bun to burger, the ratio. bun to beef, ma <laughs> ratio is out the off. window. Yeah, the ratio is off. Like, this bun is made for one patty, I think, because it's so thin and squishy. Let me tell you what I'm thankful for. Tell me. I'm thankful for that it doesn't have avocado. 
because I feel like LA has a crazy rap you about have to put you don't have to put avocados everything. on everything, man. You don't, and it's definitely not a California thing. It's not an LA thing. I grew up there. I didn't put avocados on everything. When I was a kid, we used to go to this place in, in Pico called Guacamoles. Okay. okay. And their burgers had guac in it, so you know that's always a highlight. Why not? Why? Well, why not? <laughs> So thank you for not putting avocados on this. Yeah, and look, we both like avocados. <clears throat> right. Avocados are great. Sure. They don't belong on everything. Not on everything. I, I'm, I'm a burger traditionalist. This steps outside, outside the realm of what I would classify as a burger. This is like a whole nother fucking monster Dude. right here. So we've traveled to Japan. We've traveled to Italy. Cruised down LA. Of the three burgers, mm. which one's your favorite? This might surprise you, I think the first one, I think the Japanese wow. one. Let me qualify why. Okay. I've never tasted a burger like that before. Yeah, that was a complete. I've never tasted mind, a burger like that before. Yeah, the trip. second one, the Italian one, was extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary. But there was something about the like the cleanness, the 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 levity that the <laughs> yeah. pickled cucumbers oh, oh. lent that first one. I know I hyped up the VIP experience. Okay. Where does this rank this in is, your VIP? To me, this is the top. Huh? This is the time. Hey, I didn't do bad. Look, it's one thing when you show up at like a <laughs> fancy ass restaurant where there's like the guy that like walks your wife to the seat. This is super uncomfortable. And somebody puts yeah. a napkin in your lap. It's oh, like, no. don't get so close yeah, to me. Yeah, this is behind the scenes, baby. This is Shake Shack. Oh, dude. But yet we had like, we had the Burgermeister of Shake Shack making us his favorite recipes, sliding it over. Dude, I appreciate you coming by. I appreciate you spending our season finale. Thank you for having me. You know, I'm honored to have you. See you at the restaurant. I'll see you on the internet. What's up, Burger World? It's Alvin Kailan of The Burger Show. Smash that like button. Hit that subscribe button. If not for me, for the segue.